Hello everyone, welcome back to the 500 MCQ series of Drug Inspector exam. In today's uh, discussion, we'll be discussing question number from 41 to 45. Coming to the first question of the day, a drug company labels that the drug contains 600 mg. However, the government analyst found that it contains only 300 mg. This kind of drug is called as A. Spurious drug B. Misbranded drugs C. Adulterant drugs D. Generic drugs and E. All of the above. So, the first thing you need to remember, we know that uh, as per the DNC Act, the Drug and Cosmetics Act 1914, whatever drugs or cosmetics sold in India should be safe, it should be effective and it should be standard. So, that is the primary objective of Drug and Cosmetics Act 1940. Whatever drugs and cosmetics sold in India should be safe and effective as well as standard. Okay. Now, you need to remember three terminologies. One is uh, the adulterant drug. Adulterant drug. The second term you need to remember is misbranded drug. The third term you need to remember is uh, spurious drugs. Spurious drugs. Okay. Now let's move on to the uh, first one that is uh, the adulterant drug. Adulterant drug. You need to remember two uh, keywords. So the first keyword is manufacturing. And the second keyword is contamination. So, these two terms you need to remember in the adulterant drugs. So, if the manufacturing is done in insanitary condition, if the manufacturing is done in insanitary condition, not in a hygienic condition, then such drugs can be uh, regarded as an adulterant drug. Or if the manufacturing do not follow the do not follow the good manufacturing practice called as GMP practice such drugs can be considered as an adulterant drug. So if the manufacturing is an, under insanitary condition or if the manufacturing do not follow a GMP condition such drugs can be called as adulterant drugs. Now second term I told you to remember the contamination. So if the drugs are contaminated with any filthy material, filthy substance or if it is uh, contaminated with any toxic substance or poisonous substance, then it is called as uh, adulterant drugs. Or if it is contaminated with uh, any decomposed substance, if it is uh, contains uh, uh, colors, if, if the contaminants are colors which are not prescribed, the colors which are not prescribed. So if, it, so, if the drug is contaminated with colors which are not prescribed of, or if it is contaminated with a decomposed substance or if it is contaminated with a toxic or poisonous substance or any filthy material, such drugs can be called as adulterant drugs. So, you can remember these two key words. One is uh, uh, manufacturing and the second term is contamination. So, this is uh, regarding the adulterant drugs. Now, let's move to the second term that is misbranded drug. What are misbranded drugs? Now, here the first point you need to remember is with respect to the label. Okay. The first term you need to remember is label. So, if this label contains any false claim, if the label contains any false claim, then it is considered to be a misbranded drug. Or if the label is not prescribed, not in a prescribed manner. If the label is not in a prescribed manner, not in a prescribed manner, then such drugs or this, uh, they are called as misbranded drugs. Uh, prescribed, not in a prescribed manner means if it does not contain the name of the ingredient, ingredient name, then it is considered to be a 
misbranded drug if it do not contain the uh, do not contain the direction how to use the direction to use is very important so if it does not contain the direction to use the medicine then it is considered to be a misbranded drug or if it does not contain the appropriate warnings in the label such drugs can be called as uh, uh, misbranded drugs so this is the important terminology you need to remember uh, with respect to branded misbranded drug if the label contains false claim or if the label is not in a prescribed manner such drugs ca ca can be called as a misbranded drugs now the second point you need to remember with respect to misbranded drugs if it is colored if a drug is colored or if it is coated or if it is polished so if a drug is colored coated or polished to hide the damage in order to hide the damage in order to hide the damage or to show a better efficacy a therapeutic value show a better therapeutic value then such drugs can be called as misbranded drugs so if a drug is colored or coated or polished to hide the damage or to show a better therapeutic value such drugs can also be called as misbranded drugs now coming to the last term i asked you to remember that is spurious drugs spurious drugs so here you need to remember two terms so one is if it is an imitation if the drug is an imitation of another drug imitation of another marketed drug such uh, drugs can be considered as a spurious drug or if it is a substitute of another drug substitute of another drug then it is also called as a uh, spurious drug also if it is manufactured under the name of another drug the manufacturer if it is manufactured under the name of another drug then such drugs can be considered as a spurious drug okay so if it is an imitation of another drug or a substitute of another drug or if it is manufactured under the name of another drug the, those drugs could be uh, considered as a spurious drugs so these are the three terms now coming back to our question uh here the company was claiming 600 mg whereas uh, actual uh, content was only 300 mg so whatever in the claim whatever in the label it was not there so definitely the correct answer would be these drugs are misbranded drug and the answer would be b choice let's move on to the second question of the day tartar emetic is chemically a choice sodium potassium tartrate b choice antimony potassium tartrate c choice antimony sodium tartrate d choice antimony calcium tartrate so the, if you look at the first choice if you look at the first choice anti sodium potassium tartrate is called as rochelle salt so sodium potassium tartrate is called as rochelle salt whereas antimony potassium tartrate is the chemical name of tartar emetic so tartar emetic is chemically antimony potassium tartrate so the correct answer for this question would be e choice antimony potassium tartrate let's move on to the third question of the day tetracycline can cause the adverse effect a choice red man syndrome b choice blue man syndrome c choice fanconi syndrome d choice gray baby syndrome e choice floppy baby syndrome okay so we have already discussed a couple of uh, syndromes in the, some of the previous video if you remember red man syndrome red man syndrome or red neck syndrome is caused by a drug called as vancomycin which is a antibiotic glycopeptide antibiotic vancomycin okay now uh, blue man syndrome is actually the main toxicity of uh, silver poison blue man syndrome is mainly caused by silver toxicity however one of the drug called as amiodarone can also cause blue man syndrome so blue man syndrome is a rare side effect of the drug called as amiodarone 
Fanconi syndrome is caused by the outdated tetracyclines. It outdated tetracyclines can cause kidney damage and that syndrome is called as Fanconi syndrome. Whereas Gray baby syndrome is caused by chloramphenicol. Chloramphenicol. Whereas floppy baby syndrome is or uh, the uh, the loss of the tone, hypotone, actually it is a considered to be an area of benzodiazepine drugs like diazepam, clonazepam. Okay. So the correct answer for this question will be tetracycline is the adverse effect of the correct answer would be Fanconi syndrome C choice. Let's move on to the next question of the day. Which anti-epileptic drug can be used for the treatment of post-herpatic neuralgia and diabetic neuropathic pain? A choice, phenytoin. B choice, valproic acid. C choice, carbamazepine. D choice, ethosuximide. And E choice, gabapentin. So if you look at the choice, all these drugs are all these drugs are anti epileptic drugs given for the treatment of epilepsy. epilepsy. They are anti epileptic drugs. Now, apart from the anti epileptic action, these drugs have some other use also. For example, if you take phenytoin, apart from the anti epileptic action, it is an anti arrhythmic drug. Phenytoin is an anti arrhythmic drug. Now, valproic acid is a broad spectrum anti epileptic drug. However, it is also used for bipolar disorder in the treatment of bipolar disorder. It is also used for the prophylaxis of migraine headache. Valproic, valproic acid or valproate can be used in bipolar disorder as well as migraine headache. Now, coming to carbamazepine, carbamazepine is the drug of choice. Is the drug of choice for trigeminal neuralgia. Trigeminal neuralgia. The drug of choice for trigeminal neuralgia is carbamazepine. Ethosuximide mainly used in absence seizures only. It does not have other use. Whereas gabapendi is mainly used in neuropathic pain. Neuropathic pain. When I say neuropathic pain, uh, one of the herp, especially the herpes zoster pain, herpes zoster pain, also the post herpatic neuralgia, post herpatic neuralgia, neuropathic pain, post herpatic neuralgia, GABA pain uh, is used for herpes zoster pain as well as post. Herpatic neuralgia. Also, in this uh, neuropathic pain, gabapentin is used in diabetic neuropathic pain. Diabetic neuropathic pain. Okay. So, mainly uh, the neuropathic pain, diabetic neuropathic pain, and post herpatic neuralgia. Also, gabapentin uh, has high sedative action, so it is used in the insomnia also. Insomnia. So, these are other uses of these anti-epileptic drugs. So here the question was which anti-epileptic drug can be used in the treatment of both the post-herpatic neuralgia and diabetic neuropathic pain. The correct answer would be definitely E choice GABA NT. Let's move on to the last question of the day. 100 degree Celsius is equal to dash degree Fahrenheit. So whenever this conversion is asked for the exam, please remember this equation C by 5 is equal to F minus 32 divided by 9. So, whenever the Celsius to Fahrenheit conversion or the other way, whenever it is asked, you remember this equation C by 5 is equal to F minus 32 divided by 9, where C is the Celsius temperature and F is the Fahrenheit temperature. So, here it is 100. So, instead of C, you can put 100. So, 100 by 5 is equal to F minus 32 divided by 9. 100 by 5 is equal to 20. F minus 32 by 9. So, this denominator 9 can, if it comes here, it would become 20 into 9 is equal to F minus 32. 20 into 9 is 180. When minus 32 comes here, it will become plus 32. So, the total will be 212 is equal to the Fahrenheit temperature. So, 100 degree Celsius is equal to 212 degree 
parenthood. So the correct answer would be C choice. So hope you understood this discussion. Keep on watching our video. Thank you.